Please be seated. Um, the court is now back in session. We will now have a, a new civil party. That is true TCCP 293 who will be here for the statement of uh, sufferings and harms. And court officer, could you invite the civil party into the courtroom? President, good morning, Mr. Civil Party. What is your name? Civil Party, my name is Bun Sarun. President, uh, thank you, Mr. Bun Sarun. And what is your date of birth? Answer. I was born in 1963. Question. And what is your current address? Answer. I live in Andong Krosang village, Snam Pre Commune, Bakan District, Pusat Province. Question. And what is your current occupation? Answer. I am a rice farmer. Question, what is your father's name and your mother's name? Answer, my father is Bun Ning and my mother's name is Mith San. Question, and what is your wife's name and how many children do you have together? Answer, her name is Kun Thun and we have six children together. President, thank you, Mr. Bun Sarun. And as a civil party before this chamber, you may make a victim's impact statement, that is a statement about sufferings and harms, namely physical, material, or mental, which inflicted upon you as direct consequences of those crimes and which resulted in your civil party application and that those crimes have been alleged against the two accused Nun Chi and Kiu Samporn and that it happened during the period of the Democratic Cambodia regime from 17 April 1975 to 6 January 1979. And yesterday we already met with uh, TPO uh, staff. However, we would like to uh, confirm it again. And what is your name and what is your uh, function within uh, TPO? TPO staff. Uh, good morning, Mr. President. My name is Yuan Sarat. I am a mentor counselor uh, from uh, TPO. President, uh, thank you, Mr. Rat. Uh, 
as requested by the civil party. The chamber will hand the floor to the lead co-lawyers for civil parties to put the questions relating to harms and sufferings by this civil party. You may proceed. Council for Civil Parties. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, and good morning, Mr. Uh, President, Your Honours, and everyone in and around the courtroom. And good morning, Mr. Bun Sarun. My name is Jade Van Lee, a Civil Party lawyer. Uh, before I put a question to use, I have uh, one point that I would like to uh, seek clarification from uh, the president, that is the victim information form, D22-1659, and in command ending at uh, number 98, and in English it ends at number 20, in which it reads that in the morning I was asked to uh, go and uh, transport fish sauce at Jepa Pakuda, I saw people putting, I saw the Khmerus putting people on a GMZ uh, truck. I was transported to Phnom Klai, and then I was forced off. I was blindfolded and put into the truck at Trans Security Center. I met with Teacher Ron, who said he had been detained there for quite uh, some time. During the three days clearing the forest, he asked me whether I uh, knew uh, the scarf, and I said yes, because it belongs to my elder uh, brother, who was a monk, and I was told that uh, the rest uh, had been killed. I kept thinking uh, when I would be uh, killed. At night time, I was uh, shackled, and for uh, serious uh, prisoners, they were not allowed to go and work outside. And, the, the living condition was terrible as we were not given any water to bathe ourselves. We could hear the screaming from beating at night time. My, one of my, my left ankle was a shackle at night and I slept on a platform and underneath the militia would come and try to spy on us. From my direct uh, conversation uh, with the civil parties on uh, uh, several occasions, Mr. Bun Sarun stated that what I said was the facts related to Bun Non, his elder brother, who was a former uh, Khmer soldier. For that reason, I'd like to inform the chamber and the parties about uh, this change. And in fact, this fact falls out of the scope of a tram call. President and the International Council for Kills and Porn, do you have the floor? Mr. President, I am I am somewhat surprised at the manner in which my learned friend is proceeding. It appears that if there is well-established changes. It is not for her to put the questions. She can put questions to the civil party, but I do not uh, understand the approach she is using in this uh, uh, hearing. If my learned friend wants to establish something, he shouldn't do so through questions. So the civil party shouldn't just listen to uh, several minutes of statements made by my learned colleague, my learned friend. <laughs> Council for Civil Party allowed to uh, respond to that, and we can uh, get clarification when I put questions to the Civil Party. However, I'd like to bring this matter uh, firsthand to the Chamber and the uh, concerned party. President, it is rather strange for the bench as well. This is the first uh, uh, new thing that we have heard. In fact, uh, the floor will be given to you to ask questions to the civil party concerning the uh, harms and sufferings. And we also uh, reduce the time for each party so that we could uh, 
conclude uh, this, uh, sec this special hearing for the civil parties' harms and sufferings. And I think you already uh, consumed 10 minutes of your time. And if uh, you don't focus on the, on the essence of this uh, proceeding, then you would not have any further opportunity to do so. Council, uh, thank you, Mr. President. Would you allow me to put a question on the matter that I just raised uh, to the civil party? President, whatever question uh, to put to the civil party is uh, your choice. However, you are reminded that this proceeding is about the harms and sufferings of the civil party. We have been requested to give the, this opportunity to hear about the sufferings and the harms of the civil parties. So your question is so tied closely to this topic. As for other uh, matters that may arise from the responses of the civil parties, and if they are related to the facts, then such questions are allowed during this specific proceeding. Council, thank you, and allow me to now put questions to the civil party. And again, uh, good morning, Mr. Bun Sarun. Can you uh, tell the chamber where you were at on 17 April 1975, and how many your uh, siblings uh, were with you at the time? Answer, I was at Pri uh, Chutil at the time. Tapain commune, Tramco district, Takayo province. I had four siblings, three brothers, and one sister. My elder brother was Bunnim, who was a, a soldier, and another one was Bunno, a Khmeru soldier, and my father was Bunnim who was chief of Prejudil Commune, and then uh, Mih Ain, who, who was my uncle, and he was a village chief of Prejudil during the Lunol regime. And Mom was his uh, deputy, and Wun was the uh, group chief in that uh, village. Thank you. Back then, uh, how old were you? And what happened? Answer, I was 11 years old. I lived for a little while with the 17 April, that was after the fall of Phnom Penh. I was living in the pagoda and I saw my brothers and my uncle tied up and brought away, but I did not know where they went. And then I went, asked my mother what happened. And I told her that my daddy had been arrested and taken away, and she said, no, no, he, ha he was assigned to transport fish sauce. And I said, no because I saw him being brought away. And when I was at the pagoda, I saw that. And when my mother heard what I said, she burst into tears. And I also burst into tears. And as of that moment, I left the pagoda and I went to live with my mother. And after a few months, We were 
obliged to live in Krumping Chain. And so we were gathered there. And uh, militiamen asked us to live in that village. And we were afraid because the militiamen were armed. And my father had been tied up and uh, arrested. They asked us to leave everything behind to go live in this village of Trapeang Cheng. And after a few days, um, we were assigned to a different task each day. Each day I had to transport fertilizer and bring water to the rice paddies. And I would only be given uh, rice gruel for food. We were living in the Trapeang Chang Cooperative at that time. And then um, next to the pagoda by a road, I met Uncle Ron who asked me where I was going. I answered that I was asked to come work here and when we finished lunch he said that he saw my father at Krang Tachang that he had been tortured and I did not know where Krang Tachang was and I said to him so my father is still alive and then he said yes he was living about a hundred meters from Krang Tachang. <coughs> I then asked my mother and other people to go to Krang Tachang. And when we arrived there, I saw m my father carrying water to uh, on, on the vegetable plots, and that made me sad. I was crying. He was so thin that I could not even recognize him. He was wearing uh, underdrawers. And I saw him from a distance, and I had a hard time recognizing him. We were hiding, of course, when we were watching him. I almost asked if I could come see him. Uncle Rom said, said no, no, don't do so, because uh, it's very dangerous. If you want to go there, you have to speak to me first. And it's especially dangerous for him. We risk... Uh, endangering him. So I decided not to go talk to him. So all we could do was weep. So we stayed with Uncle Ron for one night. We didn't dare come close to Krang Tak Chang. And we would hear cries I don't know if he was being tortured. We were completely broken. And the next day, we decided to go back to the cooperative to work. And we did so in secret to avoid uh, creating problems for Ron. And if the cooperative had been aware of what we had done, we would could we could have been punished, Mr. President. I don't. Uh, maybe I went a bit too far. So, please forgive me. When I went to Krang Tachang, my elder brother was uh, at the fence around the pagoda, and I heard a truck driving by and I did not know where this truck was going 
It was a Jeep, in fact. But I saw that the Jeep was heading westwards. But a few days later, I was evacuated. So uh, I skipped uh, this passage earlier, Mr. President. And the next day, the next morning, I went back to the cooperative to work, and then I met uh, uh, the head of the, the, militia, the militia chief. Uh, and uh, I was hoping to see my older brother but he disappeared. All I could see uh, were, was his robe, uh, his uh, monk's robe. And uh, I was asked um, to pick up uh, the robe and to retrieve the pieces uh, of the objects he had with him. I saw the militia chief and I was absolutely flabbergasted when I saw a sacred place become a desert. Uh, and on top of that, when I knew that my father had disappeared, and when I knew also that my uncle was a monk in this pagoda, so this really broke my heart. And I only saw loss. and damage all the way until 1979. Question. What was your religion? Answer. I am a Buddhist. Question. When you saw the pagodas being destroyed, and when you saw the statues that were shattered, what did you feel? Answer. I was absolutely torn because this was a sacred place and there were no longer any monks there. And in the past there used to be celebrations ceremonies but there was no longer any religious practice so I felt with that I was completely deprived of any psychological base in the past we could go celebrate ceremonies in the pagoda but now there was no longer a place to do so and that was in fact incredible it was an incredible regime question when your father was taken away to Krang Tachang and then your brother who was a monk uh, who was also taken there. So may I ask you, were all of the monks in that pagoda taken away to Krang Tachang and how many monks were there? Answer. There were 15 monks including my uncle and my brother. When I arrived, the pagoda was empty and the wooden cell had disappeared. All there was was a, a stone cell and all of the buildings were locked. And when I arrived, uh, I was just uh, helping out to, to organize everything. And then we returned to the cooperative at and Chan, and when my uncle Rong spoke to me about what had happened, I went to Krang Tachang. Question. Now we will move on to another topic. You, earlier, you said that you were asked uh, to move to Trapyang Chan from Trapyang Tiu. So, what did you lose uh, during this move? And uh, and what did you feel when that happened? And what were you told?
answer. We were asked uh, to move, to go to Trapiancheng. I said to my mother, well, we have a lot of uh, livestock here, so what are we going to do uh, to take, uh, the, take it with us? And the militiaman said, no, you should leave all of your livestock behind because where you're going, you will have everything that you need. So livestock and other objects had to stay behind. Uh, and uh, the militiaman asked us to only travel with what we could carry. In question, once you left, uh, were you allowed to, to go back home from time to time? In between uh, Trapiang Chang and Trapiang Tiyu, how many kilometers are there? <coughs> Answer from Prechetil to Trapiang Chang, the distance is about four kilometers. Once I left home, we were not allowed uh, to come back home uh, to see our house again. We had to do our job for Ankar. Question. And when you arrived at Trapeng Chang, were you incorporated into uh, a children's unit or did you remain with your parents? And, sir, I was put into a children's unit, but at night I was allowed to go home and stay with my parents. During the day, I had to work in my unit, so I had to leave early in the morning to get to work. Question. What were the tasks assigned to you? Were they heavy tasks or was this uh, something that children could do? Answer, my job was transporting earth on a shoulder pole from the termite mounds. The unit had to completely flatten the termite mounds and if there were small termite mounds, we had to flatten two termite mounds. Uh, if it was a big termite mound, we would have to only flatten one. Question. So you would carry earth and was your unit able to do this job? Was the earth from the termite mound hard or was it soft? Yes, and sir, we were able to meet the quota because we didn't have a choice. Uh, and uh, we were told to make efforts and, uh, and, and to do what we had to do. And yes, the, er the termite mound uh, earth was very hard. It wasn't sand. Uh, uh, there were blisters on our hands. Uh, and uh, uh, even tractors uh, have a hard time flattening termite mines. So uh, we did not have the choice. Uh, we, we had to do our job. Uh, otherwise, uh, we would not be fed. Uh, for example, if we were given, let's say, one bowl of rice soup, uh, well, then uh, the ration would be diminished. So we really had to make efforts. Uh, question. So what were the food rations for children? Could children eat on their own or, or did they have to eat uh, uh, in uh, the cooperative, in the common dining hall? Answer. We had to eat together and, and we would eat rice uh, porridge. 
question. Uh, was the Russian uh, enough? Uh, uh, was it uh, adequate uh, in relation uh, to the work you had to do, that is to say, transporting earth and uh, flattening uh, termite mines? Uh, was that of was there w was that Russian enough for that kind of job? Answer: No, of course not. Uh, we had to work uh, very hard. Uh, we had to get up early in the morning, and and we had to work. Well, we took a break uh, at around one o'clock, and then we would finish at five o'clock in the afternoon. So. All this in exchange for one bowl uh, of uh, rice porridge? No, that was not enough. Question, thank you. Was there uh, a leader or, or some kind of uh, master to um, manage all of these children? Answer, yes. Uh, There was, uh, there were leaders who would lead us to work, who would uh, watch over us, but we had to work. There was no school. Sometimes, uh, when there was a house close to where we were working, we could rest under the house or around the house or otherwise under a tree. Question. So, what were you taught? Well, we were taught to transport uh, earth with a shoulder pole, earth from the termite mounds. But we were told that we could learn how to read and write, but in reality, in my unit, uh, we only worked. Just eat and work. Question. So you were a child, and you were not able to go to school. So how do you feel about that? Uh, Answer. Well, this pains me very deeply, and uh, my ignorance is the result of this regime. When I was a child, I was not lucky enough to go to school, and and therefore I became uh, uh, ignorant. Even today. Question. Were you suffering when you worked under such conditions? Answer, yes. Uh, I cannot describe my suffering and my, revor my remorse uh, is uh, enormous because I lost my uncles, my brothers, my father. Only my mother and myself survived and I wasn't able to go to school answer question corrects the interpreter so let's move on to another topic you said that you left the uh, Trapeang chain uh, so then where did you go where were you sent to answer well I was transferred and we were told to go to Kornyai, where there was also a common eating hall because there were too many of us and my mother and I left without really knowing where we were going and when we arrived at Kornyai, we were working there. Kornyai was about four kilometers away from um, the cooperative. And at Trapeang Chang, militiamen brought us home 
and then after a few days, we were sent to work in the rice paddies and, and to irrigate the paddies. And one day, there were not enough people carrying potatoes. So I was uh, also asked to carry potatoes. And then I went to the potato plantation and Tantong was in charge of that plantation. It was also a soybean plantation. And I heard an interesting piece of news over there. I was told after your work, come see me. And I was very, very afraid. And when I finished carrying potatoes, I went to see the gentleman in question. And he said, I saw your f father and your brother-in-law. I saw them being taken away to Kalangtakchan. And I was absolutely paralyzed when I heard that. Uh, I stayed there completely flabbergasted. And, uh, and I was afraid of saying anything because he was the chief of that plantation. So I chose to remain silent. But and I told him then that I had to go and uh, take care of the cows. And when I returned home, or while I was on my way home, I saw militiamen halfway. They were watching over me to see if I had stolen potatoes or not. And then I left the cart at the Chang Pagoda. So I was watched over on a, I was <coughs> being watched on a permanent basis as Tadong, since Ta Tadong told me that my father had been taken away, my mother would only would weep all the time and so would I. I felt powerless and she also felt powerless because uh, we knew that he had been taken away to die. And I had also seen him at Klang Tachan. So when he spoke to me early, early on in the day, maybe he wanted to test me. And then I was sent to dig a pond in a, near a pagoda. And I was curious about this pagoda. I saw that this pagoda was empty and uh, we were then assigned to dig earth uh, three cubic meters. That was uh, our quota. Uh, three meters by two meters, we would only dig. And I was asking myself, why was the pagoda so calm? I, I did not see any monks. Uh, <coughs> it was a wooden pagoda. And I saw, however, a, 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 a room, a stone room in which there were militiamen. And all I would do was carry earth. And after two days, there was an explosion. Maybe it was a shell from the Lundal period. So as I, w as I was digging earth, uh, a shell exploded. And people were injured uh, who were transported to the hospital. So despite the fear, we had to continue working, we had to continue digging in order to dig up the pond. And one day I saw my 
aunt who was maimed because of the explosion. She had lost her arms. And I wanted to take her to the hospital also to see where the hospital was. Since my father had already been taken away, I also wanted to know where my aunt would be taken away. And they said, no, 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 there's staff over there. Your presence over there is not necessary. And once uh, she was uh, cured, she came back home, and something else happened. Uh, well, she suffered from some kind of liver disease, and that made her belly swell. And she was also accused of moral misconduct. Uh, she was re-educated uh, for one year. Every two days, uh, she was uh, obliged to, to follow re-education classes. And after two years, well, in reality, well, people believe that she was pregnant when she was at the hospital. But in fact, she was suffering from this liver disease. So it was too late already. After one year, after 14 months, in fact, uh, uh, she did not deliver. So they understood that uh, she was, in fact, suffering from that uh, liver condition. And then she died. And she was innocent. Question. Thank you. When you were at Konyai, you were not there with your mother. You were not allowed to go home. Is that so? Answer, no. I would eat at the Pokon Cooperative which was uh, to the south of the pagoda. Uh, did you miss your mother? And were you able to uh, go see your mother from time to time? Answer, yes, I missed her. And at night, I ran back home to see my mother. I was with Mac and Im. There were three of us. We were not in the same cooperative. Bye. We I was separated from my father and from my brother. I had hoped that I would find my mother. I tried to secretly go back to look for her. But in my unit, I did not have sufficient food. I thought that if I saw her, she would give me fruit, ripe fruits of uh, palm nuts, she would hide them and give them to me. She was happy to give me such fruit at the time because she was alone. And at the time, or rather the next day, I ran back to my unit in order to arrive on time to start work. The distance between the two locations was about eight kilometers. The president, the civil party lawyer, you no longer have any time. You've run out of time. Thank you, Mr. President, says the civil party lawyer. Deputy prosecutor, do you have any questions for the civil party? Please focus on the suffering and harm endured by the civil party because he was called to talk about such suffering and not about general facts.
Prosecutor. Thank you, Mr. President. Civil Party, can you please give us the names of your family members who disappeared or were killed during the Khmer Rouge regime? The name of your father, the name of your brother or brothers and brother-in-laws, uncles, and so on and so forth. Yes, I can do that. My father's name was Abun Nien. He was uh, taken together with uncle Om Mom and Mi Aeng, another uncle who was prejudiced village chief. And Ubun was a group chief who works together with my father, Bun Ning. And Bun Nim was a monk, and Mi Nop was another uncle, and Mi Tak was my aunt. My other in law was Uk. Hey, Bob. And another elder brother was Bun Noon. Merci. Uh, Thank you. Can you please specify when your father, Bun Nien, and your uncle and brother in law were arrested and subsequently detained at Kranta Chan? Was that before the 17th of April 1975 or thereafter? He was arrested during uh, during the day the country fell, that is when the 17th April people were evacuated. Very well. You stated that your father had played a role at the level of his commune and village. I understood that he was a chief. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. My uncle was the village chief, and my father was a group chief uh, during the Lunol regime. Est-ce que vous avez jamais appris uh, que ce Did you ever hear whether it was Dun or another person or Van? Um, why your father and other family members were arrested? When they were arrested, and a, a neighbor who uh, whose house was uh, not far from my father's house told me that they had been arrested and taken to that office, although he did not know the reason for the arrest, uh, he saw them there. Bien, tout à l'heure vous avez parlé. Very well. A while ago, you said you were deprived of food if you did not complete your work, the work involving the transportation of earth from a termite mound. Were you also deprived of food in 1978 for other reasons? Yeah. We completed the assigned work quota, then we will be given food. And if we fail to do that, then the voter only give us half of the ration. For that reason, in order to have a complete food given to us, we had to complete the work quota. Merci. Je vois dans votre form Thank you. I see in your civil party application form that you stated that in 1978 you worked in another cooperative, 
in Tacom, in Tapeng Commune in Tramkak District. And you also stated that you were uh, assigned to herd cattle at a point in time. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. I was assigned to herd uh, the cattle and uh, one cow uh, had diarrhea that I was deprived of food. And in in fact, uh, they only gave uh, one food ration for the two of us. Pourquoi est-ce que vous étiez responsable du fait qu'une vache pouvait avoir Why were you held responsible for the fact that a cow had diarrhea and were deprived of food? What did the Khmer Rouge tell you at that time? I didn't know the detail of the matter. I saw a cow had a diarrhea and maybe I thought it's because of the grass the cow ate. And then I was blamed for not informing them about the, the cow having a diarrhea because I thought uh, the cow ate uh, young grass, and for that uh, he, uh, the, the cow had a diarrhea. Then I was uh, questioned, and I was uh, warned. Merci. Thank you. This is the last subject. I have heard your testimony. I have read uh, your civil party application form. Were you moved to Persat during the Democratic Kampuche regime? No, uh, I was not at that time. Je vous dis ça, Monsieur la Partie Civile. I say so, Mr. Civil Party, because there is a document which is somewhat questionable. D twenty two slash one six five nine. I believe it is A and B for the summary in English. And it is stated that you left to go to a, pers a cooperative in Persat in 1977. Do you confirm that this information is not correct? No, uh, that, that is not uh, correct. So I uh, do not know about uh, why such information are contained in this uh, form. Actually, I moved to Pulsat only in uh, 1979. Est-ce que vous avez, depuis le régime, appris? As from the beginning of the regime, did you learn to read and write, or you have remained ignorant ever since? No, I do not know how to write. I could uh, read a little bit uh, because I uh, studied it uh, at the pagoda with my other brother who was a monk at that time. Nobody has ever read out to you a statement to the effect that you went to Persat in 1977 or did you yourself read such a statement when you were asked to put your fingerprints on the document? As for this work, uh, I actually uh, talked about Kranta Chan at, in Takao. I didn't know why the information about the uh, post was contained in that form, and I was asked to put a thumbprint on it. Merci. Je n'ai plus de questions. Thank you. I have no further questions, Mr. President. President, thank you. The chairman would like now to hand the floor to the defense teams. And first, uh, to the Anunti defense, if you wish to put questions to this uh, civil party. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. 
Um, good morning, Mr. Civil Party. Can you uh, tell me who Dark Karao is? I'm sorry. Uh, I did not know the real function or position of uh, Takaro. When he uh, came, he uh, talked about uh, sending them to for a study session. And then uh, they were taken and placed in uh, that uh, location. But at that time, I didn't know much about that since I was about 11 or 12 years old. And I only uh, heard that Takaro was the one who came to take them away. As a civil party, you just answered the question of the prosecution um, regarding the arrest of uh, your father and uncle. Um, in your victim information form, you said it was Takaru who arrested your father and others in 1973. Um, could you please clarify, was the arrest of your father in 73 by Takaru or 1975? As for the year, it happened in late 1973. At that time, that area had been deliberated already, that is from Antasam uh, to the west, and the area was under their control. Do you know when in 1973, you said late 73, but when exactly your father was arrested? I uh, did not know uh, when my father was uh, taken away, although I know it happened in late 1974, says the Civil Party. Just to be clear, Mr. Civil Party, you just said uh, late 73. Are you now saying it's late 74? It was not in uh, later 74, but it was either in late 73 or early 74. And um, you also t testified that you, at one point in time, saw your father um, working at a place which you called Krang Tai Chan. Do you know how much time there was between the day of his arrest and the day that you said you saw him? He had been there from that time until 1975 that is after the, the liberation. Then I heard that he, he was detained there. And I mean in 75 when the country was uh, fully liberated. My, my question, Mr. Civil Party, was whether you can tell us how many days or weeks or months there were between the day of the arrest of your father and the day that you saw him do things at Krang Tachan. I cannot.
not we call it after the liberation day and the 17 people uh, from Phnom Penh were evacuated through my area, then I learned the news about uh, my father. What, what, what do you mean when you say you learned the news about your father? I thought you said that you saw him. At that time, I heard about uh, my father by Uncle Ron, and then I went to see him at that office. Would be my would would my calculation then be right that when you said you saw him, your father had been already detained for one year and a half. Would that be accurate? Yes, that is correct. Um, can you tell us again how Ran knew that your father was detained at Krang Tachan? How did he find out? Because his house was not far from the uh, Krantachan office. His house was only about 100 meters away from the office, and he told me about uh, my father. Uh, can you tell us whether it was 100 meters north from Krantachan, or south, or west, or east? His house was to the north of Krantachan, and there was a pond at the front of his house, and there were many uh, coconut trees. However, I can recall about the location of his house uh, very clearly, as I was uh, very young at that time, and uh, I thought I, I would be right to say that the house was about 100 meters uh, from uh, Krantachan office and that it was likely located to the north of that office. And, uh, <coughs> so are you saying the house was 100 meters from the buildings of Krang Tachan, the buildings where the prisoners were, or was it 100 meters away from the outer fence of Krang Tachan? Yes. Uh, yes, which? Yes, 100 meters away from the buildings? It was from uh, the distance I described was from the fence of the uh, prison. That is from uh, the fence to uh, his house. Uh, uh, from my estimate, it was about 100 meters, although it, it would not be exact, as it is just my rough uh, estimation. But were you able to see with your own eyes um, the buildings where prisoners were being held? Yes, I could see a part uh, of the building because uh, there were big uh, trees, big tall trees, uh, like teal trees uh, in uh, the area. And when I saw him, I, he was carrying uh, water. Now I'm trying to, to establish, Mr. Civil Party, how you knew, or how you still know today, whether, it, whether the buildings that you saw were in fact something that we call now uh, Krang Tachan prison. How do you know 
that what you saw was in fact the prison called Krangtachan. I did not know that uh, that office was a prison only after I told it was a prison and when I went there, yes indeed I saw a prison there and uh, that was the first time I went there. And before I went there, I never knew uh, a prison or that office uh, existed, and I only look at it uh, from a distance. Mr. Simple Party, do you know a, a place in Takio province called Krang Tachan Memorial Site? No, I don't. And when I uh, went there, I did not know whether it was also called a, a memorial site, but I was told it was a prison. And during this regime, when I went to uh, Takayu province, I was told by a woman that uh, the area was a memorial site now as he went to, uh, to engage in this uh, ceremony uh, twice. But I myself haven't been there. Do you remember how Ron knew when he told you the buildings that you saw were Krang Tachan prison buildings? Did he tell you how he knew? I didn't know about that. He simply told me uh, that uh, that was a prison and my father was uh, detained there. And then when I went there, when I saw prisoners there, of course, I, I knew it was a prison. Um, the problem with the civil party is that there were mo more prisons and I I'm trying to establish whether what you in fact saw was what we now call Krang Tachan prison. Um, can you give us some more clarification as to the reasons why you think uh, it was Krang Tachan prison? Or is it just because you heard the name later and you assumed it must have been Krang Tachan prison? I knew it since the time that I went there because he told me it was Krang Tachan prison. Um, I'll, I'll move on, um, Mr. Silverbrighty, to another subject, my last subject. Um, if it's correct, you were um, 12 years old in 1975, is that true? I was 11 uh, years old at that time, and by 12, I went to uh, Kohnyeich. Um, did you go to school when you were six years old or seven years old, um, or at any year uh, before you were 11 or 12? No, I did not. I stayed with my elder brother at a pagoda as he ordained as a monk there. So before 1975, you didn't visit any school, is that correct? That is correct. I didn't attend any schooling as I stayed at a pagoda. 
However, I studied a very literal. Um, my last question, Mr. Civil Party, can you explain to the Chamber why it is that you blame um, the Khmer Rouge regime for not having had education and not um, the regime before 1975? Because uh, during the regime, I uh, did not uh, go to school, and because of the uh, various wars, and I did not dare go to school before that, as the school was located at Ong Roka, it was rather far, and I didn't want to uh, go there because I was afraid of uh, the shelling or the bombing, and. Then I decided to stay with my uh, other brother at the pagoda, and I studied uh, informally very little there. And uh, later on, when I uh, grew up during the uh, Khmer Rouge regime, because they were in uh, control and I didn't uh, go to school, that's why I blame them for that. But would you agree with me that um the war is also a reason, uh, maybe, that you weren't able to get education? Yes, uh, that is correct. Thank you, Mr. Sebobad. President. The floor is now given to Kirsten Paul's defense. Council Consum on. Thank you, Mr. President. Kirsten Paul's defense does not have any question for this civil party. Thank you. President, thank you. And Mr. Bon Sarun, the chamber is grateful of your presence uh, to. Uh, answer questions about your, the harm and suffering inflicted upon you during the Democratic Cambodia regime. You may now be excused from the courtroom and return to your uh, residence, and we wish you a safe journey. And court officer, please make necessary transportation arrangement for the civil party to return to his place of uh, residence. And Mr. Ajun Sarat, you may also rest uh, now. President, the time is appropriate for a lunch break. We will take a lunch break now and return at uh, 1.30 this afternoon uh, to resume our proceedings. And for the afternoon session, we will hear statements of our sufferings and harms by through TCCP 251. This information is for the uh, parties and the uh, public. Security personnel, you are instructed to take Kirsten Pond back into the uh, uh, waiting room downstairs and have him back into the court room before 1.30 this afternoon. The court is now in recess.